So as promised we will now take these lab experiments to the field so we can get a reality check. So let's just confirm the dictator game and the ultimatum game that we just discussed. In the dictator game the outcome doesn't depend on what the player 2 does because uh, he doesn't get to he she doesn't get to decide. So player 1 gets 10 tokens and decides somehow uh, to give away x. Uh, to player 2 so player 1 keeps 10 minus x and player 2 gets x obviously if player 2 has no choice then you think most humans will choose 0 uh, x to be 0 so player 2 gets nothing there is no consequence and yet human beings choose to give something and it's larger than what you think it would be this is something that has to be figured out especially in terms of sustaining the commons because this could be good news right people are not just s rational egoists, selfish rationalists that they do worry about social values, equity, justice kind of things without any pressure, without anybody watching. So in, in the ultimatum game on the other hand player X one gets a token, uh, 10 tokens gives away X to player 2. If player 2 accepts it then the game is over the uh, player 1 keeps 10 minus x and player 2 uh, gets x so player 2 has to somehow decide that x is good enough uh, and there is no communication between them and it only happens once they don't know each other so you know player 2 is making a decision well I'm happy to get something or that this is not enough not worth keeping so I would rather not get anything and so on and so forth and in the second uh, option you have uh, player 2 rejecting the offer of X and then neither one gets anything so player 1 has the motivation to give just enough hoping that player 2 will accept knowing that this only uh, happens once so it better not be very small amount but how big has it to, does it have to be to uh, expect that player 2 will accept the offer so it's kind of nice experiment right so here is Joseph Heinrich an anthropologist in the field uh, looks like our neighborhood here uh, this flag is probably uh, Nepal Bangladesh something I won't bother but bringing the lab to the field how general are the findings of the experiments performed with undergraduate students at uh, American and European universities do these decisions represent the entire population or are they just artifacts of a Western cultural heritage anthropologist Joseph Heinrich started to perform ultimatum experiments in the Amazon with communities who have not had many interactions with Western societies so they are not playing any rationalist egoist games by learning they are just doing what is intrinsic to their culture and their uh, values so that's here do also oh, that's the Amazon uh, maybe okay doing such experiments is very challenging one has to work with a population who might not read or write, who may not use money or possibly speak a rare language that you don't speak. Furthermore, field experiments are not conducive to computer-based experiments like those performed in the laboratories as discussed previously. So in the field experiments are translated into local language if money is not relevant to the community so there is nothing they, sp they can spend on so they only barter and exchange things then rewards will uh, have to be given in physical objects such as food items experiments are performed with pencil and paper or physical objects so you use sticks and so on people make decisions one at a time in one at the time uh, in private and only later uh, the decisions of player one are matched with a randomly drawn player two so you have to make sure that you are sampling properly and not biasing individual preferences in your uh, conclusions right so look at the results directly and you will be surprised mean offer versus rejection rate in the ultimatum game from different places so you have rejection rate and mean offer even though mean offer is high here the re uh, I mean the rejection sorry the mean offers are in this range and the rejection rate is zero so it's not necessarily that the highest uh, offers are getting 
uh, zero rejection rates and then as you move towards rejection rates there is a kind of a, a scatter that's not easily explained so Machu, Machu Guenga in Peru is down here so rejection rate is low and average offers are here and other places Papua New Guinea are scattered all over the place so rejection rates are here or here so reject the rejection rate is higher here even though offer is higher than here so what is it that relates the rejection rate to the offer it turns out that this is dependent on complicated behaviors uh, like uh, not having a market where they get their calories let's say you are using uh, food as uh, the uh, offer from player 1 to player 2 and player 2 is not buying anything from the market so doesn't have a sense of what is a good offer and what is a bad offer if it is enough food uh, maybe just keeps the food and rejection rate is low even though offer rate offer may be low like here and even if the offer is high rejection is may be high because there are uh, ideas of gifts that there are some communities apparently where uh, if you get something you are expected to gift something to the other person even though you don't know the person so when you get something you are not sure uh, how you would gift back so you would just reject it and saying I don't know the person I don't know what to gift back or how much to gift back or whatever so the the behavior is very complicated in terms of their exposure the action arena they're in the situation and the norms and cultures so in other words you don't get a very clear picture of the relation between mean offer and the rejection rate okay so read the text to understand a bit more the mean dictator game where the second person has no option but but to take whatever your main question will be why would a player one give anything to player two when he or she can get away by giving nothing because player two has to accept whatever is given or not given player one keeps whatever remains right so mean dicta dictator game offers in terms of the percentage of stake given the endowment what percentage of the endowment is given away and that depends on market integration so percentage of purchase calorie in diet so somehow it is related to buying things and the action arena that comes with that and the action situations you have ex experience and the internal evaluation you have made and you have the uh, you know how you decide how much of the resource you are going to uh, spend on these things and what you are going to accept as an offer so without going into details uh, you can see that the US is over here where market integration is a hundred percent and mean dictator game offer is uh, at you know close to fifty percent which means people are giving a relatively high amount almost fifty percent even though they know that they don't have to right and there are places where market integration is zero and the offers still range in uh, you know from as low as uh, less than you know around 25 percent to over 40 percent okay so the main point we will learn later on uh, in details is that many factors play into how people are uh, behaving in social dilemma situations like the trust game dictator game and the um, Ta -ta -ra, I keep forgetting the ultimatum game okay so these are the three games we looked at they look simple and yet they pr give you so much insight into human behavior not only in the lab but even in the real world in the real world you are still doing it in a controlled setting because you have selected a population you have selected uh, players and you have involved certain uh, you know endowments could be food could be something else and 
it still exposes the details of how human behavior works and the mo main message to remember here is that actually this doesn't depend on uh, human beings being selfish rational human beings there is something else going on okay so critical reflections three social dilemma experiments were introduced in this chapter the trust game the dictator game and the ultimatum game the games can be analyzed using action situation framework experiments with these games in the lab and the field show that theoretical predictions that people will act as rational egoists are falsified they are just not true. There is not yet a general alternative theory of decision making, but it's clear that most humans take into consideration the well-being of others, including strangers, when making decisions. We also discussed how experiments can be used to explore how the level of cooperative behavior is influenced by social context, such as the level of market integration. So social context does influence things, and there are other details Altruism, for example, is a learned behavior, depends on the allegories and the stories you hear from grandma or uh, what the religion says to you. And the general idea is that learned behaviors can also be unlearned. So this is talking about something else that's very intrinsic to human beings. And there are multiple situations we considered uh, with the trust game, the ultimatum game and the dictator game and the behaviors are consistent and they are not rationalist and egoist. Okay, So think for yourself, what do you ex uh, expect will happen if two bankers play the ultimatum game? Okay, If one bank makes an offer to the other bank and uh, if the other bank rejects the offer, nobody gets anything and so on. So why is it important to think of bankers? Because bankers take the money and try to make as much money from it as possible as well. right? And what if an ultimatum game is played where the members of the 1% are players 1 and members of the 99% are player 2. So very rich people versus very poor people do any altruistic or uh, charitable instincts come out in that case, especially if they don't know who the other player is, right? Have you experienced a situation similar to the trust game, okay? Have you give shared information with somebody uh, without knowing that the, the information will be protected and will, there will be no free riding and you will not be cheated and yet you uh, ended up repeated uh, plays with that person, especially if somebody that you don't know. Obviously, it's about the example of airline tickets that I mentioned, online shopping we do with Amazon or whatever. You know, all sorts of uh, situations are there. So just think about those and see what your own behavior is like. What would you do in a trust game or an ultimatum game or a dictator game? We are not saying 100% of the people are behaving this way. We're just saying majority of the people seem to behave this way which gives us ways to create uh, pathways to sustain the commons and achieve the triumph of the commons and avoid the tragedies of the commons right